So what's actually happened here is once I hit carve, the section that was uh, intersecting with my carving block has now become one, two, three, four different sections. Has uh, The computer has automatically cut it and it's grouped them all together. Groups like this are created every time that you carve something or you can set groups automatically or manually with your um, with grouping function. I'll show you how to do that later. But right now we don't want this group together. Once you select it, right click on it, and there's an option here that says ungroup, hit that. I don't really like how this uh, window turned out. It's just too small. So once you hit ungroup, now I can select these blocks individually. I'm going to move this down a little bit. I'm going to yeah, move these down. Let's see. I'm going to make everything flush. Let's see. I'm going to quickly make it the way I want it. Move that over. Copy this over. So now I've got two windows. Kind of looks like a jail. Okay, so there it is. Now I have a little house with some porch. Now I get this piece of crap out of here. A little house with a porch, and there's my spawn. And right, uh, and this will be, I suppose, my idea is this will be one player spawn. Obviously, it's not going to look like this. This is pretty awful. But um, this will be, like, suppose the red spawn, and we're going to make a blue spawn now. So as a reference, I'm going to go to my center of the map here. Oops, there it is. Where is it? There it is. I'm going to go to the center of the map here, make a uh, block. Let's make it 512 by 512, and set it in the center. That's going to be where my um, king of the hill hill is. And now what I want to do is take this whole thing, and let's see if I can do this. Suppose in a, in a multiplayer Team Fortress 2 game, if you're making a map, then you should make it, make it symmetrical. Um, if you're if you're doing a, a control point or a king of the hill type map, I'm going to select both of those. This will be my uh, I'm going to duplicate this entire thing, and in doing so, I'm going to make another spawn, a little house that looks just like this, except I'm going to put it somewhere over there. So I'm going to take this whole thing, I'm going to hit Shift, click, duplicate, and now I have successfully made a, a double of the um, the spawn and the um, King of the Hill part. Now what I'm going to do is you can I'm going to rotate this whole thing. So I can right click it, say flip objects horizontally or vertically. Now in order to rotate it 180 degrees, I'm going to have to do this both ways. So a flip horizontal, I'll make that flip horizontal. And now I'm going to flip vertical. I hope this works out the way I envisioned. Yeah, it is. Okay. So what I've essentially done is I've taken these two. Um, uh, I've taken the the spawn and the control point area here, and I've rotated them 180 degrees. If you don't do uh, flip objects horizontally, vertically to rotate them 180 180 degrees, what you can always do is rotate them manually. Sometimes this is good when you're placing props and stuff. We'll get into that a little bit later. When you're placing entities and you want them to face a certain direction, once you have them selected. You can click on your selection again with the left mouse button, and then that turns your selection instead of scaling to rotating. You'll see these little um, circles on the edges of your selection here. You can click and hold one of those, and you can rotate your building or whatever y your selection is around a central, the central pivot there. I'm not going to worry about that right now, so I'm going to undo that. I'm going to take what I um, originally selected and I'm going to line those two um, control points up with each other so now and I'm going to delete one of them hit delete now I've got a perfectly symmetrical map for all intents and purposes 
Still not much of a map, but we're getting there. You can kind of see um, what kind of shape it's taking. We've got two spawns, and we've got a central area, which will be our king of the hill. So now I'm going to talk about how to encase this whole thing up in, um, well, OK, let me put it this way. Those of you um, may have gotten, last time you uh, compiled the map, something called uh, a leak. And what happens there is entities will literally kind of leak out of your map into this blackness out here. This is the, uh, well, you know what? It's, kind of, it's just difficult to explain. It's impossible for the computer to kind of calculate infinite distances. And this is what it is. This is, uh, in, in source, your, um, this is just nothing out here. You need to close up your entire map into something into a, into a finite kind of world. Your entire map needs to be in one big room, in other words, or a series of big rooms, if it's an outdoor map or something like that, or maybe the entire thing is indoors. In any case, any time you have spawns or entities like ammo boxes or you know control points, pretty much anything that requires you to um, you know, have a fun game or anything that is um, required for the game cannot touch this black outside. It cannot find a path. It cannot somehow go through any doors or windows like what we have here from the inside to the outside. This is the simplest way that I can explain it. So suffice to say, this map does not fit those requirements. If I tried to run this map, I'd get a leak error, and then it would still run, but that's only because this map is very simple. If you try to make a more complex map, then leak errors will cause some uh, big problems. So what I'm going to do is enclose this entire map into one big, huge box. I'm going to go into my... Um, uh, textures right here. I'm going to type uh, dev. It's going to give me some developer textures. Pick this boring gray color. And I'm going to make a huge block here. Doesn't really matter. There we go. Enter. So big, huge block. I'm going to essentially, I'm going to duplicate this, move this up, make a big ceiling, and then some walls. And I'm duplicating the brushes again. I'm, I've got a habit of doing that. So now our, my entire map is closed up into this gray um, texture. It's actually not very, it's not very good, is it? I'm going to retexture all of these. It's not very clear. There we go. That's a little bit better. OK, so now none, as long as you don't have any cracks in these, um, in these uh, the wall ceilings and floors of this entire huge box, and nothing's going to leak out. This is our gaming construct, if you will. Um, and then this will cause the map, as long as everything's sealed away from this void out here, you won't have any problems. This is a little bit more complex. Um, you, know, you have to think a little bit for, uh, again, uh, kind of how the program works, how compiling works, and I could uh, put you, direct you to some websites if you're more interested. And, and learning some more. But here I've just sealed everything up and now I'm going to start the next section.